Hi, this is the Society of Imaging and Informatics and Medicine Clinical Data Informaticist Series video, or SIM CDI. This particular video is What is Pathology? We have two speakers today. Our primary speaker is Dr. Ann Fulkins, who is an Associate Professor of Pathology at the Stanford University Healthcare System. I'm going to be your narrator today. My name is Terry Sippel Schmidt, and I'm an adjunct professor at Marquette University in Johns Hopkins. Neither Anne nor I have a conflict of interest to declare. What we're going to go through today is, what is the daily clinical practice of a pathologist? What do they do on a day-to-day -day basis? We're gonna talk about the differences between a visible light microscope or glass slides, and then whole slide imaging or digital pathology. We're gonna talk about the state of digital pathology today and current opportunities ahead. And then finally, Dr. Falkins is gonna discuss the differences of sharing pathology images whether they're with colleagues at different institutions, oncologists, or even patients. I'm Ann Falkins. I am a pathologist at Stanford uh, University in Palo Alto, and I work mainly on gynecologic pathology as my specialty. I'm also the director of surgical pathology and been involved in a lot of the conversion of our department to whole slide imaging for primary diagnosis. Pathology is a diagnostic specialty. And for us, there are two kind of two branches. There's the clinical pathology, which mostly deals with body fluids, where the analytical um, testing is being done on fluid-based specimens. And then there is in anatomic pathology, which is the branch I practice. Our evaluation is on tissues and organs. And so we're looking at anything that's removed from interventional procedures, usually either biopsies or whole organs. And then we're doing series of evaluation on that various tests and rendering our opinion. Generally, when we talk about imaging and pathology in, in anatomic pathology, there are two types. There's whole slide imaging, which is when we have an image of an entire glass slide, and I better explain what a glass slide is, versus non-whole slide imaging. So where do we get that glass slide? Um, I guess I should back up into what we do, is that we take, say we have that tissue or we have that organ, it comes to the laboratory, we cut it up or we process it, we decide which parts of it we wanna look at microscopically, and then we're going to fix that. We're going to put it in paraffin. We're going to cut it really thin, put it on a glass slide. And traditionally, we've looked at those glass slides under a light microscope most of the time. We also can use things like um, immunofluorescent and electron microscopy. But for most of the time, it was light microscopy for many, many decades, right? Hundreds of years that we've been looking at it that way. And then in the last much more recently, we've developed the ability to have digital images created of those glass slides. And that's what we mean by whole slide imaging. And so it's not just a picture of one area on that glass slide, it's a dynamic image that is at a really high magnification and that you can actually zoom in and out for up to uh, different levels of magnification, just like a microscope. So that's whole slide imaging. And then non whole slide imaging is a slew of other types of pictures that we take. So we might take pictures of the actual tissue or organ before we've made it into a slide. So that's a, called a gross image. Um, we would also have images that we would take of fluorescent or electron microscopic images. Sometimes we actually do x rays of specimens. So say it's a a resection, we'll do an x-ray of that because it's helping us to see where we want to take our samples. So all those images get put into our analysis of that tissue as well. So the order gets made by whoever is seeing that patient. And so for a clinical pathology sample, which is usually like a blood draw or some other fluid, that order would be placed and there would be a blood draw and the blood would be directed for anatomic pathology, it's more of a tissue. So it's either removed as a biopsy or it's removed in the OR as a during surgery, if it's a larger thing. And then that's going to come to us. We are going to take a look at it. 
physically looking at that thing, deciding which part, does it look normal? Does it look not normal? What parts of it are we going to sample if it's a larger specimen? We sample that, we fix it in formalin, which um, preserves the tissue. Uh, and that takes quite a while. So that depending on how big the tissue is, then we actually embed those little pieces that we've taken, the samples that we take and get embed in embedded in paraffin wax. And then that wax gets cut that has the tissue in it into super, super thin slices that get laid down on those glass slides that I talked about earlier. And then they can be stained either with just what we call a hematoxylin and eosin stain, which is just a regular H&E, and we can look at it. Or we can throw on all sorts of different special stains that target different antibodies, or maybe they're hybridizing on there. So lots of techniques that you can use besides just looking at it under the scope. You can tell things about the different types of proteins and surface antigens on those cells, which helps us make those diagnoses. And then you can also use that if you wanted to use that for other reasons. You could also use that for molecular testing, cytogenetic testing, all those other things that might add to you helping you make the right diagnosis. And then at the end of that, we'll issue you know, a pathology report, which is similar to a radiology report where it's summarizing after we've looked at all of that, what we think is going on. The orders are put in directly either by the surgeons if it's in the ORs and they use and the nurses. And then if in the clinics, it can really be anybody who's doing a biopsy, right? A dermatologist would put it in if they're doing a biopsy you know, a gynecologist would do it if they're doing a biopsy. So it would depend on, on who's taking that sample. Interventional radiologists give us a lot of samples, right? From their procedures, those all come to us. You know, pathology is where radiology was quite a long time ago, where we are just starting to convert our images from, for us, it's on glass and looking through a microscope, but converting that into digital imaging and having the capability to do analysis on digital images, apart from just what we see with our eyes on a, for you guys, like a plain film back in the old days, right? So that's actually just very young in pathology. And it's just only a few big places are doing primary diagnosis on, um, on whole slide images. And the future of that that we hope to, that opens up for us is the ability to do AI algorithms that will help us with a lot of our tasks. Maybe will make us better at what we do, help us with some of the more tedious things. And right now we don't have a standard file format for images. And that is, makes it really hard to move the, image, the whole site images around to export them to use them and develop algorithms because there's all these different file formats depending on what company is being used. So there's a lot of high interest in the research community and the clinical community to develop and implement these AI algorithms. But we, the file format issue and the fact that we don't have a standard file format is, makes that reality much more challenging. I think there will be, there already is interest in sharing the images, both between outside of pathology with other physicians um, and also with patients. And the other interest that we have is being able to do digital consultations. We do a lot of consultations where cases are sent for second opinion. And right now they come via FedEx as glass. And so developing the ability to move those images and share them freely uh, in a secure way, of course, is a, a quite a top priority. So some of the topics that Dr. Falcons discussed today is what is the typical day of a pathologist or what is the clinical practice? She discussed glass slides and the difficulties in sharing glass slides, including shipping via Federal Express. She discussed the current state of pathology today. A comment on that. The DICOM information object definition for whole slide imaging does in fact exist and has existed for quite a few years. If you are purchasing pathology equipment, you have to require in your RFP that equipment is able to produce images which conform with the DICOM whole slide imaging as well as other DICOM objects. 
For more discussion on this, please see the website from Dr. David Clooney, dclooney.com. The corollary to that is that proprietary images can be converted to DICOM whole slide and as well as other image formats, but these image sets are typically very large and it's a time consuming process. Finally, please connect with us at SIM. Connect with us on Twitter at SIM Tweets, our website, or even better, join SIM as a member. Join us at the annual meeting so that you can hear speakers such as Dr. Ann Falkins. Our annual meeting is typically in June or Join us at the Conference on Machine Intelligence and Medical Imaging, or CMIMI, which is often held in September. Thanks for joining us on this video, and have a great day.